Welcome everybody to Connecting the Universe. I'm author and researcher Mike Ricksecker. We have a great interactive class coming up for you tonight. The connections between ancient Egypt and Ireland. Sounds like a bizarre connection, but it in fact does exist. We're going to kind of work our way back little by little. And I say little by little, but we're taking a big jump to start. That's a good 1200 years into the past. And that entails this object here, which in 2006, it was discovered in a peat bog. It's an ancient book. It was found in Fat and More of Counting Tipperary, made of papyrus with an Egyptian style leather cover. So just for starters, how close is this to where we're going to be this coming summer, July? Well. Connie Tipperary is where uh, Rocket Cashel is and Cahir Castle, both of which we're going to. So we won't be going to the peat bog. It's actually private property. Uh, but they were doing some, some digging there, uh, basically peat moss farming. In the digging and the excavations that had been done there, they discovered this book, which actually about six years beforehand, there was a leather satchel there found as well. And many people believe that the two are, are connected. That maybe even the satchel held this book so this is actually a what they call a psalter so it's basically a book of psalms here it is when they found it in the mud and then when they cleaned it up a little bit uh, you can see the writing here on the pages it's actually in latin the dating of this book like i said this dates back about 1200 years so it was written in about 800 AD. Again, it's a collection of Psalms and only about 15% is actually readable. I'll go ahead and throw, throw up a page here. This is most of, well, two pages that they were able to retrieve from it. But you can see from this other photo here that it's in, uh, you know, it's in pretty bad shape. So, okay. So this thing, it's written on papyrus. It has a Egyptian style leather cover. How did, and it is written in Latin. So how did something that has connections to Egypt written in Latin uh, get out here to, to Ireland? Uh, what's interesting though, because I said that there's a situation here with the book itself and the satchel that it may have been in. So bogs at that time, again, we're talking 800 AD, uh, were used often by Irish monks as hiding places for valuables from the Viking raids that were going on at the time. So you know, Vikings would come into a village, they'd be raiding it. The monks want to preserve their history, their legacy, and so they would hide it in the bog. That may sound crazy, but there's actually some science behind this, even though they probably didn't realize what it was. So what's the connection to Egypt here? How did this book get there? This connection, at least this one that we're talking about now, goes back to the Coptic church. So what's the Coptic church? Basically, these are your Egyptian Christians. Uh, when we were out in Egypt this past June, we got to visit one of these, and it's a Coptic cave church. Uh, really, really beautiful. And uh, they have a very, very rich history. They actually carved this church out of the rock. Here you see some of the photos of the uh, the pulpit area. Those windows that are back there actually are out of the cliff. So when you look through there, you, you're looking like hundreds of feet below and you're overlooking the city of Cairo. And then they have all these uh, amazing sculptures here. These are done by a, a Polish uh, sculptor. So the Coptic church is actually quite important. So uh, you had the cops that were basically proselytizing there in, uh, in Ireland, developing churches and connecting there with the, uh, with the Christians, with the monks there in Ireland. It's a, it's a very interesting connection, but what we can also attribute to the cops is they have some credit here with the Rosetta Stone. We're not going to spend too much time on this. We, we could spend an entire class on the Rosetta Stone. But 
they were very instrumental in helping to decipher this and bring us the hieroglyphs today you know we without them we would we would not have translated this because the coptic language what that is is basically a version of the ancient egyptian language now they wrote it out differently but the pronunciations were essentially they weren't identical it's never going to be precisely identical the way things are pronounced it's it's like we believe this is the way it was pronounced you know everything lines up between the coptic language and the egyptian hieroglyphs uh, as far as like the meaning you know it, we know most of it but the way it's pronounced it's like you know, i took some courses in hieroglyphs uh, before i went to egypt and even the instructors are like well this is the way we believe it was pronounced uh you know, ancient the ancient egyptian language didn't have vowels so they're like you know these are kind of the letters that are going together this is the way it's supposed to kind of be pronounced and you're talking about a language that would have been developed over thousands of years there are stories about visits to ireland by by the seven monks of egypt and what they called the desert fathers or the desert monks these are monks that came from egypt and visited ireland long long ago and we're going to talk about a individual named angus the coldy uh, written by angus the coldy a text called Salter Naran. this is an anthology of biblical poems that contains a book of Adam and Eve. It, it, it's really almost like a lost text of the Old Testament, you know. And the, it's always interesting when we find these uh, these lost stories or lost scriptures and, and lost texts because you know, we know that the the Bible that we have today is incomplete. It's composed in Egypt in the fifth or sixth century. But what's interesting is that this was only recorded in Ireland. Basically, these desert monks came to Ireland with you know works there from Egypt and they shared it with the Irish and then we don't know really what happened and they were there but then they kind of disappeared to time as well and this work only remains there in Ireland it's these monks that are believed that this we'll go back to it here this Psalter that was found this leather bound book that was discovered in the mud it is believed that this came from these desert monks that's again 1200 years ago some of it goes back before 600 a.d let's go back a little bit further because these connections continue to go further and further back so some people may recognize this this is the mound of hostages at Terra in Ireland. So our story here starts in 1955 with archaeologist Dr. Sean O. Riordan. He was a uh, professor at Trinity College. And what he discovered here, this is the middle of the archaeological dig where they're, they're digging down to the, uh, this is a burial mound. And he found there the skeletal remains of a young boy about 15 years old, carbon dated to around 1350 BC. With this boy was a necklace made of faience beads, matching the design and manufacture of Egyptian beads. There's also a collar there that matched the collar laid around the neck of Tutankhamun, although I couldn't find that collar so these here are the beads and you can see it's uh put together like a necklace there's a lot of interesting things about this particular tomb so this is a, a photo of it after they've removed all the earth from it the passage has a solar alignment with the cross quarter days so this is february 4th november 8th usually when things have a solar alignment we usually see them as something like a solstice or an equinox or something like that this one's some, a little bit interesting where it's a, a cross course so basically between what's also interesting is that the mound is on you usually see this it's on an older structure we don't really know what specifically that older structure would have been used for except that it was dug out of the actual bedrock it dates back even further than the 1350 bc uh, but this particular boy that was discovered there 
uh, in the beads. This is what Riordan says specifically about the beads. Uh, he says the Terra beads are not made of true faience, which normally has an external colored glaze, but of a well-known variety of Eastern Mediterranean synthetic material in which powdery blue glass or glaze has been mixed with quartz grains in which after molding has been fired. Such hard glassy faience or variant E of the material has been described by A. Lucas, Ancient Egyptian Materials and Industries, 1948 is well known in Egypt. Uh, he also dates the beads to about 1400 BC by comparison with similar examples from Abydos in Egypt. Abydos is the temple that has you know what we call uh, like the helicopter and the airplane and all that up on the one lintel near the ceiling in the temple. This boy had some sort of connection back to, to Egypt and he was buried there. We're going to take it a step further and we're going to talk about this stone. This is the stone of destiny or Leah Fail. There's some controversy to it because the Scottish believe they have the real stone of destiny. So there's debate. So this was basically a coronation stone for high kings of Ireland. It was actually once located outside the mound of hostages, but it was moved in 1824 to commemorate the Battle of Terra. And it now marks a mass grave of 400 United Irishmen. So they moved it from one burial mound here to another burial mound there. Go figure that. There are a couple of different legends surrounding this. One of them states that the stone was brought in antiquity by the semi-divine race known as Tuatha de Danann. So there's the legend of Scotia or Scota. I'm sorry, there, there are two sisters, Scotia and Scota. Scota was an Egyptian princess who fled from Egypt with a large group of followers and arrived in Ireland in 1700 BC. So this was prior to the boy with the beads. It's believed that Skoda, whose descendants are said to have become the High Kings of Ireland, was killed in battle by the Tuatha de Danann, who are the ones who were supposed to have brought the stone. So you see all these interesting connections here. So the Tuatha de Danann, they bring the stone down. You have Skoda, who's supposed to be a princess, daughter of the Pharaoh of Egypt, that ends up there in Ireland. They do battle. She's killed there. But this stone becomes the stone for the high kings, which are supposed to, according to the legend, be descended from her. What's also interesting about her is that Scotland's supposed to be named for her. So there are, again, these Scottish connections as well. Like I said, they believe that they have the stone of destiny. All right. So we'll go ahead and wrap this up for this evening. ConnectedUniversePortal.com for those that are listening in later on. Be sure to join us live uh, for one of these Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Just uh, sign up at ConnectingUniversePortal.com, 30-day free trial. Plenty more material out there about Egypt, shadow entities, uh, all kinds of articles. Uh, everybody else down in the chat, you guys have a great evening. Till next time.